understand this okay I'll give everybody this is obviously if you're watching the YouTube thing you can see who it is right there but if you're doing the audio deal on Spotify or something then yeah you really don't know unless you kind of read the little paragraph or whatever but this nice mystery guest is used to coming in a little late because oftentimes I'll tell them they come in after the second or third song Oh, I see. See what I'm saying? Yeah, because he plays the sax. 
Right? Okay. And so he, yeah, you he, spilled a bean or oh, two. Oh, no, okay. okay. Uh, I always do this, though. Yes, I you do. I always spill the beans. It's a pretty big cup of beans. And, and, <laughs> <laughs> okay, now the voice. He plays the sax. Now, now the voice. He has boys. long, beautiful oh, gray so hair. Oh, so okay. <laughs> Must mustache. <laughs> okay. All right, all right, now keep it there. All right, keep it there. We're going to let him sit and kind of percolate for a minute. Okay. So, I haven't seen you since your show. I know. Yeah. That was good. It was an amazing show. Number 51 of the Backyard Improv. And this mystery guest who's going to be introduced in just a couple seconds. He was, he was there. He was there. part and he parcel to that incredible show. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? Paul Deegan. Mr. <laughs> Paul Deegan. Both saxophonist of many different types of saxophones. Flautist. Welcome, brother. Thank you. It's an honor to be here. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Yeah. yeah. That's we cool. are excited to have you. Yeah. Do you play any other instruments? Really, just saxophone and flute. I have my own repair shop, and so I repair all the wind instruments, and therefore I can play them all a little bit. And I, um, but really, sax and flute. I also teach uh, clarinet and recorder. Uh, but I'm not very good at those instruments. You wouldn't want me to bring them to a jam or anything. Oh, record? Uh, but I can play them long enough to teach. Do people play that in a band? Um, they, that was the it, shit in the, school that the they gave you. Yeah. Right? Didn't they yeah, it's really common like the in fourth elementary grade school. Or? Oh, it's common in elementary school. I played in a, a original progressive rock band in the early 90s. And we actually had one tune where I played recorder. I played an alto recorder. Oh, wow. And it was an intro to one of our tunes. So... Okay. You have to create cool. your own opportunity if you want to. <laughs> yeah. Kind of a cool trend, though. It'd be yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, but, um, so, yeah, I saw that when I um, I did a little research on you, just kind of looking to see what you're doing, where you're playing, and who you are as an artist. Um, I saw that you had a, uh, a repair shop. Yeah, and that you did all the horns, all the wind instruments. Yeah. 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 Um, so what percentage of, uh, what percentage of time do you spend um, fixing um, or restoring instruments um, as opposed to playing your instruments? Uh, well, there's there's more money in the repair. It's really not a lot of money in anything that I do, but the repair is more steady. Um, and so I probably spend more hours a day doing that. I like to say I repair in the mornings, uh, teach in the afternoons, and then play or perform or rehearse in the evenings. Oh, that sounds like a good balance, actually. Yeah. 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 So, um... You're from San Jose, originally? Uh, I live in now? San Jose. I moved up here in 2016. Okay. So I still feel like I'm pretty new to the area. Sure. That's pretty... Yeah, in 2016, that's... that's it yeah. seems like... A few, seems few like years ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like so in, where are you from? Origi uh, um, Southern California? Well, originally I was born in Tucson, Arizona, but I grew up on the East Coast in Columbia, Maryland. I went to college in Florida, um, Tallahassee. Okay. Florida State, and then I moved to Los Angeles in 89. Okay. And I did move to New Orleans for a year at one point and came back, and I moved to Santa Barbara for a couple years, maybe three years, and then came back to L.A. Uh, but most, most of my adult life has been in, in Los Angeles. Okay. And Me too. Oh, really? Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, what part of L.A.? Uh, originally, I was living in uh, the Hollywood area. Okay. And then, in the end, after I got married and had kids, we were in West LA. That, well, that's me, West <laughs> LA. I came up here uh, in 1998 to open up a clothing store. Already had one son, little guy, that we ended up having another one while we were up here. But from West Los Angeles, Westwood Village, West, you know, West Westwood, yeah. Culver City, Santa Monica. Yeah, that's that, that's my hood. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> and we're probably about the same age. I am, yeah, I was born in 65. Okay, me 60. I'm sure we must have saw each other. I mean, do you ever go to Westwood Village? <clears throat> um, yeah, well, day? I moved to, to the West Side uh, after I got married, so that would have been around 03. Okay, you were busy with kids. So all yeah. through the 90s, and uh, I was in the Hollywood area. Okay, yeah, yeah. And I didn't get to the cool. West Side that often unless I had a gig. Yeah. yeah. Did you move because of music? Or for other reasons. You move here? Move to um, Southern California from Arizona and then from, from I know you went to, you said you went to we college went to Florida in Florida. Yeah, yeah, I lived in, in Tallahassee for a couple years out of college, but then I had to go somewhere. And so, yeah, I moved to Los Angeles to uh, attempt to pursue a musical career, okay. which yeah. didn't go great. It went uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I also repair instruments, and that turned out to be 
what, what worked for me. Yeah, so it I created mean, the financial stability that you needed and obviously exactly. brought you close to the instrument. And yeah, it kept mm -hmm. me close to the, the musicians as well. Exactly, exactly. So um, speaking of the instrument, the sax, so why the sax? What made you, and did you study music and why did you choose the saxophone? Well, I actually started on flute. I got my first flute in 74 in elementary school. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a song I heard on the radio that had some flute on it and you know, I wanted to play. So I, my parents bought me a flute and I learned the radio song and a few other songs off the radio um, and joined band, but I couldn't read music very well. So um, I wasn't allowed to, to play at the concerts because mm -hmm. I didn't play that well. Um, so I ended up quitting, but I, I had the flute. And then, but really it started in um, middle school, in seventh grade, my, uh, my mother, my sister was in band and my mother thought that our band director, Lee Stevens, was the best teacher at our school and that he would be a good influence on me. So she told me, you know, join band uh, so you can, you know, study with, with Lee Stevens. And so I, I went to sign up. I had braces. So there was a list of instruments you could play with braces. <laughs> the saxophone was on the list. Really? Isn't that funny? Is that a thing? It's actually Yeah, you can't play trumpet yeah. in certain things that yeah. it's not going to really work with, with braces. Do you think that would pass these days or would that be like, this is discriminatory, <laughs> yeah. you know, this, I, I, you know, it's so funny because things that were accepted back then were probably not. Everything has like, a fight now. Yeah, like, right. Everything's yeah. contentious. Well, I was true. actually just thinking how, like, destiny is so interestingly individual. It's like, okay, well, you have to play a particular instrument because you have braces, so that kind yes. of narrows your path. So you know? let's just, because yeah. we're going to do this. We're going to go off the rails a little bit every now and then. <laughs> you know me, so I'm, story. Well, yeah, no, just remember where you're at, though. But I'm just Stop curious. To remember your place. <laughs> <laughs> Please remember where you're at, because i got to get this out, bro. i got to get, before I forget it, I'm just about to forget it right now. Go for it. So before they enacted that rule, mm -hmm. right, Jordan, oh, I had a chance to ask you how you were. Okay. Good. Uh, before they enacted this rule where they wrote it on paper and said, if you have braces, I'm sorry, you can't wear it. Mm -hmm. There was probably not that play. policy yeah. in place. Right. Go ahead. It's just that uh, you can't really play trumpet. Because I mean, you physically painful. can't play you physically it. put that pressure on oh, your okay. lips. Yeah. I thought they were getting a trumpet back that's all scratched up or something. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> no. Just that it's physically okay. harmful Impossible. to the player. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, really, Because okay. the trumpet, you're putting pressure directly right. on your teeth on your, exams, on your yeah. lips, pressing your lips against your teeth. Gotcha. And if you have braces, of course, there's braces there. Right. Huh. That could be painful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So what about it just those, doesn't work. the whole Invisalign thing these days? Yeah, well, I don't know if that's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> you can pull you that out, right? To yeah, that's it's like a ball card kind of a thing. Okay. So. Okay, well, anyway. I <laughs> it's a different, different day and age, but yes. I think that, that that still holds. Uh, if you have, you know, the metal on your teeth, you can't really play a brass instrument. Makes sense. Yeah. So there was a list of instruments, and but I didn't know what to play. I was sitting there and trying to, you know, check one. Uh, but the kid sitting next to me is like, what are you going to play? Well, I don't know. I'm looking down the list. He's like, well, I'm going to play saxophone. Saxophone is the coolest instrument ever. Saxophone this, saxophone that. And I was like, oh, yeah, I wrote down saxophone. <laughs> <laughs> You're and an that's influence really how it started. That's um, cool. But I took to it immediately. I can still remember the first day I got home and pulled out my saxophone in the living room and started blowing it. And my, my dog was looking at me like, what's going on here? <laughs> but I can still remember you know, that, yeah. that day of getting my first saxophone. Wow. Very and, um, cool. And then you know, I kept with it. And then in tenth grade, I picked up flute again. I had it. It was down in the basement. And then I, I picked up flute and started studying and practicing that as well. Nice. Yeah. I mean, you play them both so well. I mean, I love what you Thank do with you. the flute. I love what you do with the saxophone. And speaking of the saxophone as an instrument, now that you've been playing for how many years? But that's almost fifty years. Wow. Um, but. I haven't played consistently. I've mm -hmm. taken little breaks from playing um, many times. Okay. So I keep, you know, life distracts me and I get away from playing, but mm -hmm. I always come back. So consecutively, I have no idea how many years. Okay. You know, but it's been like a 50 year span. Yeah, most um, of my life. Where you've since, picked it up guess, more than you've put it down. We're 50 years since I got my first flute and then 48 since I got the saxophone. Okay. And I'll just say this one of the things that I enjoy, which you haven't had a chance to see yet. Um, is when he brings the baritone in, the baritone sax, yeah, the very like that big, one. humongous. 
and I check with them every now and then, but that's a production, right? And you have to be kind of like working out on each one of these. And what is the status of your berry? So you know, they, you're right, they each require their own practice. I still have the berry. I was playing it a lot. When, when we met, I was playing with uh, Bobby Valderrama. Yeah, right, group, which, which we were going to bring up. Yeah, yeah. the Inside Inside Funk. Yes, yeah. sir. Bobby. And I was, yeah. I was playing berry with him. I actually, he brought me in to replace a trombone player that he lost. So uh -huh. he met me at a jam in... Um, in San Jose, the the stretch that was hosted by Tim Lynn, and it was a Sunday jam, and I, I met Bobby there, and I was playing tenor, and he didn't really need another sax player. He already had Martin, he had Jesse, great sax players, and then Manny on trumpet, um, but he liked the way I played and thought I would fit in with the group, so he brought me out to play, and but I'm like, now we have three saxophones and no trombone, and then I thought, well, you know, I actually have a berry. So why don't I play that? So I brought the berry in and I played that in his group, unless it was a tune where I had a solo, which quite a bit, he's very generous sharing the, spreading out the solos. And so if I had a solo on flute or alto, I would play flute or alto on that instrument. Um, but all the other tunes I played berry sax. And so that's how you knew me from the beginning as yeah. a berry player. Yeah, yeah, and I loved it. Still yeah, see a lot of that instrument. stuff. Yeah. I'll bring it out. Okay, you're gonna have to bust it out. So, so what can the berry do that like um, the other sax can't do aside from getting very low, right? Well, that's that's the main thing is okay. it's really low, so you can do more bass line type okay. of stuff with it. Um, but it's a very it's got a very wide range, so you can play almost as high as a tenor or an mm -hmm. alto on it. So it has this, so you it still has that versatility. Yeah, okay. has, you use an extended technique to play high, so you can't really play fast. Okay. and clean up there but you still have that range um, but it requires practice because the fingerings are literally a half step off mm -hmm. of the other two instruments so if uh, you're not careful and you go for a b and a b flat comes out uh -huh. or whatever so you have to kind of be used to it right. um and I've, I've had a few scary moments where i'm trying to wail on barry and, and i know the altissimo is the high range and i know it comes out pretty easy and i'd go for it but I'd forget that the fingerings are a half step off and that would right. throw me for a loop every now and then. But it's a fun instrument, it's very powerful, mm -hmm. um, and uh, but it's also heavy on your neck and takes oh, a lot of air. Okay, yeah. yeah. In general though, I think like the sax is like, um, if, you know, I don't know what you think about it, but it's like the symbol of like jazz or, or soul or like the, the soul, like I feel like when you're, when uh, an artist is playing the sax, it's like playing his soul, like, can you like feel the soul of the person you know like it really is almost like a language um, like, a human, like a like a symbolic human, human language yeah 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 like a human voice yeah and I, I feel like it's as close to the artist as some of the other instruments are though I think they translate to obviously that particular um, character or soul of the artist but the sax does it so so beautifully so clearly you didn't pick it for that, though, right? Because you didn't know enough about it to choose it for that. Right? You know, I really picked it randomly, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I immediately, even blowing into it and, and feeling the instrument vibrate in your hands and hearing the sound that came yeah. out, I, I inclined to it you know, immediately. And, uh, and also, I know from teaching and from other friends that play instruments, sometimes people will take to one instrument and not an another. Right. So I always tell people, if you pick up an instrument and it's just not going anywhere, doesn't mean necessarily that you're not musically inclined. It might mean you just picked up the wrong instrument and tried a different way. Right. Well, that's good advice. Yeah. And so the saxophone worked for me. Yeah. It was pretty obvious pretty quickly. But yeah. if I had picked up another instrument, who knows? I, I Like guitar, I actually did. I love guitar, but mm -hmm. I, every time I picked it up, I didn't really go anywhere with it. You know what? This is going to be a little bit more self-serving, but I just want to say thank you because I want to talk about the Backyard Improv for just a few moments. Not sure. only were you in number 51, which was our last one, which yeah. you, you were partnered up with Ryan Price on bass, mm -hmm. Simon Russell on keys, and Wally Schnally on drums. <laughs> well, what about show. that, bro? Was that a, that was that a, was, I feel like I'm not worthy. Oh, oh, they're so goodness. amazing, and they're so much fun to play with. And, oh, my God, you are just as worthy. He was, was like, dumb. I mean, you they are, were they killing were it, weren't yeah. they? Well, no, it, I, mean, I mean, you have a particular <clears throat> sound that is so unique. I mean, it really, it really adds so much to... The ensemble. I mean, it really does. I mean, you could do a you could do a show on your own. <laughs> you when know? you play with a group of musicians at that level, it just it makes it so much easier. Yeah, you're there, and they're 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 behind you. Yeah, you know, I noticed. I played with 
all three of those guys. Never in that configuration before, right. but I've played with Wally at least once before. I've played with Ryan a couple times. And Simon. And Simon a couple times. Yeah. And um, I noticed that they're, they're very good at listening and, and following what I do. So I'm, usually when I play in a band, if I just people call me out to play in a band, I have to kind of just follow along what they're doing. Uh, but with these guys, you know, they're also listening to me and responding to what I do. And, and they're really good at that. It just makes it so much more fun to play. Yeah, and that's the whole, you know, I always talk about the theatrical yeah. nature of things, mm -hmm. which yeah. I don't know. I mean, maybe you're on so much on one side of it that you, you, you don't really, yes, you're, you're um, talking to the other mus musicians throughout the performance is a, an art in itself because it's a combination of verbal cues plus hand gestures and or just sounds that, you know, so, I mean, I'd love to hear about, how, you know, how you communicate. Do you, do you, are there some times where you just got that visual communication of like, okay, I'm going to step in for the solo now, or now I'm going to pull out. I noticed that when you're going to exit a piece, you literally exit a piece. I start walking you back. Step you start walking, and you I'm saw like, that too? And I'm thinking, right. oh, is he going to yeah, get the no, drums that I, I said, way? that's so easy for the musicians <laughs> to know. But I did it perfectly. The dude I'm like, oh, he knows what he's doing. And then, okay, so we're going to step in. Is there anything else, I mean, that you look for? Well, when to come in is kind of, you let the music kind of take shape. Yeah. And then the way I look at it, I'm like a horn player. I play a line. So usually the rhythm section will set up some kind of groove. And then I attempt in the short amount of time I have before I start playing to figure out what could be kind of like the melody or the hook to this. And hopefully I can think of something. If not, I'll just start playing um, until, until the hook comes. But the goal is to try to find some kind of hook or some kind of melody that works to what they're doing and use that as a springboard to go into a solo. And then uh, sometimes I solo a little longer than I should. No, and no, I, no, I catch no. myself doing that. And part of the reason is I feel like I want, if I'm not happy with what's coming out, mm -hmm. I keep playing you're until, until, you're happy. until yeah, something yeah. good comes yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. then I'm like, okay, I think I went too long. I start walking backwards and okay, so you wind down. Okay, so you question. I'm sure you got a bunch of them, yeah, but you it. know what question has to follow that. Um, I do. Well, okay, I think you'll know what <laughs> okay, I'm about to ask. Uh -huh. Here's the timing of a, you're, she's like got that whole reporter quality to her. <laughs> she's on her game. She just, no, you know, I'm she's, just and I'm just, no. Music. Yeah. Go ahead, so the but, question yeah. is, which we've asked everybody, mm -hmm. do you end up watching any of them? Do you oh, watch okay. any of your performances? Do you critique yourself? Like, for instance, I, didn't know you I think, that, but okay, oh, you didn't know. No. All right. Okay. But Martin, like, for instance, didn't Martin say that he never, he never, he watches, never them. watches them? Because he's such a And we've had other people like Kevin King, oh, I watch them right away. Other people, no, no way. I'll be overcritical. Yeah, That's like, I Martin watch them all the like time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where do you I'm stand? I'm kind of like Martin in the sense that I, when I hear it after the fact, I cringe a lot. And I'm like, wow. oh, that could... But I do watch them, um, mm -hmm. partly because I also extract little excerpts to put on Instagram of little clips sure. that I'm playing. And, and there's always some good, good stuff from these. So I'll, I'll sift through to see, is there anything that I want to Use. extract and put on, right. on Instagram? But also to, to learn... Um, you know, how to do these better and how to improve as a player. Um, and it, the, the interesting thing is, and this is really true at any time I record myself playing, but especially in these jams, the experience of the, 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 the tune when I'm up there versus what I see is going on when I'm just passively watching, it's completely different. Like the groove, the, the changes, everything is just like, oh, that's not, you know, how I thought it was coming out. Mm -hmm. and it's, so it's really fascinating to watch. So I like to watch it for that. And sometimes things that you thought, oh, I think I actually played something pretty hip. And you, and you, you go through and listen. And it's like, oh, no, that wasn't as cool as I thought. <laughs> There's something else I, where I thought I bombed. And I, I listened and was like, oh, that's, that's uh, the best thing I played all night. So, I think that if I was a musician, I would have his approach. Yeah, uh-huh. It's hard to know when you're up there what's going on. So yeah. it's nice to listen after the fact. Uh, the secret is not to listen right away. Oh, because that's you're so emotionally involved in what happened. Really? You wait a week or two and you go back and listen to it, then it's easier to kind of just take it for what it is. I, I, I totally understand that. I do that with writing. Like when the magazine comes out, I won't read it for like two days. I'm like, I'm too attached. I have to, you know, create some space so that I can see it in a new way, you know? Um, and you know what's crazy? <laughs> I'm not like that at all. <laughs> 
I'll do that <laughs> as soon as you guys pull out from the improv or whatever. Yeah, you're like I'm right there. I'm working on content right away, <laughs> and I'm are, looking at it. And what's weird about it? Yeah. Look, this is real talk. This uh -huh. is an exaggeration. Yeah. Everybody's gone. The the, the 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 concert's over. Two hours later, after Doug is helping me and Terry and everybody's you know, lending a hand, I come here and I start downloading the information, I, the, the videos. I look at them right away. <laughs> but not just because I plan on working on them. It's just, it's weird. I was there. I just videotaped the thing. But I have this desire to watch them again. And you know what? And relive it, right? And Sounded. relive it. And that's And true. it's just as good. It's, and it's, sometimes I'm like, I'll leave and I'm like, oh, I know that shit was a jam. It's like a kid in a and then I'll watch, Yeah, and then I'll watch it later. I said, oh, man, I was right. No, that's a double jam plus. You know? It's like getting a, a birthday it, present it or something. Like, you can't wait till you get home. It's in I'm the car. You're going to open it, it up. Just if I like something, I'm passionate. <laughs> yeah, no, you are. You are. Yeah, you're like I'm that. Into it. And actually, I admire that. That is, um, you just go right in. It's like a nosedive, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, we did have a song called No Hesitation. Ah, uh, that is definitely you. Yeah. Is that me? Yeah, that's me? the okay. impulse room. The spontaneity. Oh, that, that, yeah. Impulse, yeah. yeah. And again, let's give love to Bobby because Bobby, you know, Valderrama right. yeah. from Eastside Funk. That's where I met you from, as well as Martin Rossip and a lot of the other cats. You know, he hasn't been part of the Backyard Improv, but even Les Thomas, the guitar player. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. He played in the club oh, at one of great. the improvs. Yeah, yeah, the whole band. But Bobby, you're right. He's really the one that, that brought me into everything because Bobby and Martin. Yeah. But it was Bobby was the first, I would, when I first moved to town in 2016, I was just going to jams because I obviously didn't know anybody. And Bobby was the first person to kind of bring me in and offer me to play in a band. And that's where I met Martin. Uh, and then everything has really grown out of that. Martin's really helped me out quite a bit. Oh, that's cool. And, and it's neat to hear. Yeah, that is so cool. Yeah, like you, you like to mention that I, I played with the Temptations, but that's really Martin's doing. He's the one who got me that gig. Yeah, he talked about that. Yeah, Not you, that. but the, the temp that he played with the Temptations. Yeah, yeah but still, yeah. you have to be good enough to be accepted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you got to play the part. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. got to show but, uh, up. And, and they they call me back many times, so that's yeah. that's a gig I do fairly regularly, and it's it's a ton of fun. Yeah, but that's all through Martin, and even one of the bands I play in is a big band. When I moved here in 2016, we came up for my wife's job, and I remember telling her I didn't know anything about San Jose or the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. We're just coming up, you know, because my family's coming here. I'm coming along, and. Um, I just told her, I just hope there's a big band I can play in, you know, because I was playing in a big band in LA and I like that to practice reading and playing in a section and everything. And I didn't know what to expect, if there's any big bands or not. Turns out there's quite a few. Yeah. Uh, but Martin was playing lead alto and, and really the best one, a touch of brass. But he'd been in that group for so long and he was looking to gig more and it was interfering with that. So he was looking to back out and then, so he introduced me to Ed and got me in to you know take his place playing lead alto and the touch of brass so Martin got me in there as well. Serendipity yeah. though. I yeah, believe in that is. whole thing. Right? Well I love all the connections that everyone has with each other in many ways. Yeah. We find there are more connections than anything else. Yeah you know? and I saw a thing where not long ago who were you playing with? You were playing with it was it in the mix and you have was it Ben Mesterka? That maybe you met through, I don't know, I met, if you met through the Backyard Improv? Yeah, well, the funny thing is, yeah, I met and Ben. And Norwood. Yeah, yeah. So I, I met Ben, I've done two jams with him. One was at the Impulse Room right? a long time ago. So I knew who he was and, and really liked his playing. Mm -hmm. um, but I hadn't seen him in a while. And then we were, the, the one, I think it was in November, the jam where you had um, Ben and I on the Right, and Ryan again. And Ryan, yeah. yeah. And, Chris. and Chris Campbell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was, uh, I was just... Amazing group. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's like, you can't ask for more than that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, the, the funny, you know, you don't tell us who's going to be playing at these jams. We had no idea, but the mix <clears throat> had brought both Ben and I uh, to a rehearsal to see if we wanted to play with them. So we just happened to be at that rehearsal oh, the week, you know, the week of, I think yeah. like the Wednesday before. And then um, Ben mentioned, oh, yeah, I'm doing the, the, the Peter thing on Saturday. Oh, so <laughs> and we kind of found out. That's funny. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, it's a small world, right? It's been right? years, and we yeah. just happened to run into each other three days before we were oh, playing like each it. other. Oh, yeah. I like it. Uh, I like it. So cool. Now, you mentioned um, earlier before we were um, on the air um, that you were touring, or that you're planning on touring, or that you, you were telling us about a tour. 
Oh yeah, so I play in, in a lot of groups, but three bands in particular, and one of them is the Stinkfoot Orchestra. I don't know if you're familiar with them. It's a Frank Zappa kind of tribute band, mm -hmm. but done right. We mm -hmm. have six horns. We have the full mallets percussion player. Um, we have two stellar female background singers. You know, great guitar player Tomek um, does all the you know Zappa lines beautifully, but also has his own creative style. So you need a good guitar player to do Zappa music. And then of course Nick is our keyboard player, band leader. And then we're fronted by one of Frank's original frontmen. Actually, we have three that we rotate through. The main one is, is Napoleon, because he lives in San Jose. Uh, and he's just, I mean, I think he's 80 now, 79 or 80. And wow. he's just still full of energy, spot on, uh -huh. uh, just such stage presence and just such a joy to work with. Uh, but when he can't do it, we've also had um, Ray White and... Um, have it, it'll come to me in a second. No There's yeah. many of, of his other uh, front guys. And so we always have uh, an original front man um, playing with us. But um, we go on these little mini tours. And we're going up to the uh, Pacific Northwest next Wednesday for, for three shows. Okay. We so, keep them short because we're all getting up there in age and, uh -huh. and a lot of us still have day jobs. So we go do these little extended weekends, sometimes Southern California, sometimes uh, Northern California, uh, we've been to Boise, we've, we've gone around different places. Okay. Uh, even if you're not into Frank Zappa music, it's worth mm -hmm. checking out because yeah. it's it's something to behold. Yes, so we, Frank Zappa was a big influence for you, right? Didn't you listen to his music when you were you much know, younger? Or, or not yeah. as much. Uh -huh. I was always told I should, should check out Frank uh -huh. Zappa, and so he was always on my radar, but... Mm -hmm. And when I grew up, there was no YouTube or Spotify or whatever. So you had to, you know, fork out a bunch of dough to buy an album. Oh, yeah. And every time somebody would tell me, oh, you got to check out Frank Zappa, uh -huh. I'd ask, which album? And everyone said a different album. So <laughs> I didn't know which one to get. And somehow I never ended up buying it. It was complicated, you know, so yeah. you don't know which one to hey, get. Doug, really. Were you a Zappa guy? You know who Frank Zappa is. Yeah, I was yeah. just, he passed away, correct? Yeah. Was, oh, was that recent? No, By the way, I we got to give lot, love yeah. to Doug. Long time okay. ago. He's always, always helping us all the time. we got to give Doug. And something real funny about Doug, which I'm going to follow <clears> through at some point in time. Last time we were talking to Simon Russell. I don't know. We've gone <clears> off on this thing about wanting to talk about Doug. So we're going to get t-shirts. Oh, Doug Day. Where it's just a Doug, Doug Day. face. <laughs> just, just the face and nothing else. Like the bully and dynamite. I'm going to follow through Doug on this. Doug Yes, we yeah, we're going to do that. I'll get one. Yeah. Yo, you'll get one. Okay, that's fun. And I, and I said, everybody has to wear one except Doug. <laughs> right. So that's fun. Yeah. All right, where were we? I wonder who Doug oh, is. Mike Willis yeah. is the other. Oh, so you came to you. Singer, guitar player, great guitar players. Too. Yeah. I mean, all three of those guys. That you know, they played with Frank in the 70s and the 80s, but they all still have it. And so it's just such a fun band to play with. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I ever thought to myself, I remember going, man, the flute's pretty damn cool. It is. I love it. It has such a natural sound to me. Yeah. It's very versatile. Mm -hmm. and people so don't, honest. don't know it. So almost all my gigs I get on saxophone, but I really consider myself first and foremost a flute player. Oh. <laughs>
sometimes for years and my saxophone gets buried in a closet somewhere but my flute is always on a bookshelf and so I've always you know played flute even during my kind of downtime um, but I have to create my own opportunity so I'll get a gig on saxophone and then once I'm there I'm like you know flute might work on this yeah, yeah. and sometimes people are well, resistant you do with my shows yeah, right? You're very exactly. yeah. yeah. you can call me out to play flute but uh, yeah. I bring no, it every I think single time it, no but I think every now and then I do I see that you have it with you yeah, right yeah. and I'll be like hey let's work the flute in this one or whatever well now so. you know the deal if, if I'm there the flute's there yes yeah so no I know I'm it's gonna, coming I'm gonna work sure. it in if I can no I like it I like the diversity because when I host these concerts um sometimes somebody will ask me you know they, they try to fish for information so they'll try to be like hey can you tell me who's playing i say no 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 the only time i make allowances are some of the house hosts that i've been to on a repetitive basis and they come they become uh, unofficially or officially part of the committee as i'd like to call <laughs> i mean you get special privileges right when you're having all these people over at your house and <laughs> using your bathroom and shit right so i get some of them who go you know hey i posted the three or four of these now can you want to let me know who's playing right <laughs> i'm like oh shit okay for you i'll tell you right uh -huh. well dunk shaking his head over there every now and then i, no. I, I if they really no. ask me but everybody else i don't and even some of those he caves <laughs> yeah, he now, caves well, it depends i want to make sure i can go back to them oh, you know you you'll go yeah. back throwing them across but whenever i say paul deegan's coming yeah. there's always a smile on somebody's yeah, face of course there's always like oh cool yeah. we know we're gonna get some good shit here yeah. so um man it's been a pleasure I, I and it's going to continue to be but how many of these if you were to include the club and the backyard <clears throat> how many of these improvs have you done with you guests because i've lost count you know i thought you were going to ask me that but really? i've lost count as well yeah. and so i'm not sure i know i did at least three or four at the impulse room i think so and that's not even including those mega ones yeah, yeah, there was, yeah, I think the mega one, one of the mega ones was the last one I okay. did there. It was shortly before. All right. And um, you must have done like five, six, seven of them here. So, I mean, you've probably got, what, ten in you? Probably ten. Yeah, yeah. I would, in the ballpark, yeah. yeah. I don't, I'd, I'd have to really go back uh, and, and count them through, but they've all been great. Well, is it okay if I ask you, and this is very self-serving, I get it, but what do you like about the improvisational thing? I mean... You look like you have a lot of joy when you play. So it's nice when we look at musicians and they seem happy. Mm -hmm. They're smiling. They're happy to be there. You can see them interacting with a positive vibe towards the guests that are there and the other musicians. But from an artistic standpoint, what do you like about not just that, but our scene in particular? I'll say ours because it's you, it's Doug, it's everybody. What, what do you like about what we do? Well, I remember when you, you had the Impulse Room and we were just playing there with Bobby's band and you'd have the little posters on the wall about the jams. And I remember seeing the posters and thinking, that's really cool. I hope he asks me, you know, one of these <laughs> oh, days. Okay. And I played in the 90s. I played in, in kind of some jam band type situations. And so I thought, yeah, I know this. I've done this before and this will be cool. Mm -hmm. um, but the interesting thing is when I started doing yours is they're, they're quite different because every time I've done it in the past, I knew the musicians. It was always the same little group of people. And I didn't realize at the time how much I rely on the fact that I know everyone's musical personality before we start. But in your situation, that's that's not there at all. <laughs> now I'm starting to, to you know recognize people because I've been doing it long enough. Yeah. Uh, but especially in the beginning, these were people I'd never met or heard before, and I had no idea where they're coming from. And it's it's really quite challenging and interesting, and it, it really it, it really keeps you on your toes and, and searching creatively. And then so you're not only trying to figure out what to play, you're trying to understand what other people are doing, where they're coming from, and then how to, to complement that. And it's it's it can be frustrating and intimidating, but it can also be very, very inspirational. Well, you know, and, I'll, and, and I know you've got more to ask, but 
that's why I always impress upon everybody and I sound like a broken record, especially <laughs> those poor people that come all every show. They come to all of the shows. It's not like they come to one every once in a while. You mean some the audience. That, the audience uh -huh. Right. So some of them, you know, they're busy, they got shit, they'd like to come to every one if they could. Yeah. And there's other people that no, they changing their plans, man. They're coming to this. Uh -huh. and, and and so I get like a broken record sometimes, but it bears repeating and this is what he just said is what I like to convey as you know to everybody that it's not a normal situation that you guys roll into. Yeah. I have such high regard for you because yeah. if I was a musician, which I live vicariously through you, mm -hmm. I wish I was a flautist, I wish I could play sax like Paul Deegan. Yeah, I'd be... Paul, Paul yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Are uh, they online lessons? <laughs> well, what? Are they? I, I've done it during the pandemic. We were all <laughs> became, you know, masters at teaching online. Yeah. Well, are, so are you currently teaching now? I'm kind of going off on a tangent on my own thing here, but are I'll you teaching you back, now? That's yeah, right. so I have my own shop studio, and so yeah. Yeah, I, I teach at the studio. But some of my students that went online during the pandemic, they're still online. It's yeah. just so convenient for Yeah, they for prefer people. just to get on, yeah. So how do people reach you if they do want lessons? For getting me from He has a website. Yeah, you can go to my website. Oh, you can email me. Um, Let them know what it is. Oh, it's it's um, pauldeganmusic.com. <laughs> okay. It's got a spell last simple. number. Oh, yeah, but D -E -G -E -N. are you yeah. just going to go there and know to punch that in? Yeah, D-E-G-E-N. No, um, but you say it's pretty simple. Like, oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. I'm not saying for you it's pretty simple, but it is a pretty simple. When I oh, yeah, no, up, that's very simple. I was simple. like, oh, Paul yeah, Deegan yeah, Music. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just it's want people simple. that are watching and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Or email if you, me, paulDeeganMusic yeah. at gmail.com. Yeah, but there are a lot of Paul Deegan, so Paul Deegan Music. There are a lot of Paul Deegan? Yeah, there are, actually. You're the one and only. You're the real Paul Deegan. <laughs> I'm the real one. <laughs> He's the real one. Um, but as you were saying um, about the, well, I, I about just, the challenge of... You know, working and playing well, music it, with people that you, you're unfamiliar with and then having it be impro improvisational. Now, and here's the thing. Yeah. With our scene, if you're an audience member, because I get all the time new people coming. I mean, you're busy engaging with the musicians and whoever you can see in the first couple rows, but we're getting new faces all the time. And sometimes when you get new faces, if I didn't vet them or what I mean by that is invite them and then therefore explain to them exactly what to expect and if they're like a uh, friend if of a regular who's like hey my friend whoever would really like to come they would really dig it and I'm, I don't necessarily talk to them but I believe in that person enough they've been to enough of them they know what to convey but I, they may not convey exactly everything so when they know that they come and that you haven't played together before you're just meeting for the first time it becomes very theatrical. So that's why I get so much enjoyment out of it. Not only am I listening to killer music, but I'm like, okay, Paul never met. Well, this is the first time Paul's meeting this person or that person. And then, you know, I just wish I could do what it is you do because not everybody, not every musician, it's intimidating for some musicians, I would imagine, right? Yeah, it really is. I mean, some people are really are all about rehearsed music. Other, you know, jazz is the is the art form of improvisation. Um, so jazz musicians are usually good at it, but it's still a it's a different thing in this situation because we're all from different backgrounds, and even in jazz, there's still you know, you know, chord progressions and, and that re standard of repertoire of tunes that people play, and whereas this, it's just just go. Like I remember uh, one of the very first ones. Um, I think I was playing. It was actually one of my favorite ones, um, but Clarence was a guitar player. Um, I think Clarence Williams? Clarence Williams, guitar player of Second Planet. Yeah, then, and um, it was um, Tommy's, no, no, was it, what the, what was the drummer's? You, um, you weren't playing with Daniel Parente on bass, were you? On that not, one? I mean, I have. Uh, yeah, you're right. The Good Memory is a one. great bass player. Oh, but yeah. This was a different one. It okay. was um, Roderick, I think, was playing bass. Roderick Brewster on yeah, bass. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. It was one of my favorite jams, and the drummer's name, he was so good, and I can't remember his name. I can picture him. Okay. It, it was a really long time ago, okay. but that was one of the early ones, so I remember, your, I think you you know, you know have different people start each jam, and so it was my turn to start one, and I was trying to think what to do, so I looked over at Clarence, and I'm like, what do you think, C minor? And you're like, no, <laughs> no, you're not supposed to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> just was play. I that animated? Yeah, yeah right. probably. <laughs> yeah, like die. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I remember that quickly. Okay, okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry.
uh, of the Stigfoot is the keyboard player and singer as well gotcha. the House Rockers, plus two other horn players. The Barry player, um, John Hassan, who's the one who brought me into the, the Stinkfoot to begin with. So I knew John through the big man that I played with that I joined because of Martin. Well, so, you know, Martin got me into the Ed's yeah, band and crazy. then I met John, who's a Barry player who used to play in Ed's band um, and met me playing with Ed's band. And then he brought me into the to the Stinkfoot where I met uh, Nick and and then Mike McWilliams, the other trump, trumpet player who plays with the House Rockers. And so it, it all it kind of mushrooms out. And that's another reason actually why I like playing with your your thing because it expands my my circle circle yeah. of, of musicians yeah. like mostly who i know are in the south bay yeah um but there's all this other whole world of, of bay, great talent North all over bay, everywhere and bay. you're tapped into it and so it's just so much fun to yeah. to come and meet different players and hear different players and get to to jam with different people i appreciate that i do because it's a and just personally i appreciate that and i'm gonna just pan the room here i mean you got doug you got everybody it's just such a communal deal right i mean between the house hosts the people that are kind enough to allow us to do it the the, the people that go to everybody's house it's an adventure every time you go to a different place it's yeah. like hey what is this place gonna look like how do you get there how's the park it's kind of adventurous right it is yeah you never know where you're gonna be no that's it you know the and one is this the right house there's always yeah. somebody outside the <laughs> right. so, yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute, that, yeah the mad hatter is typically <laughs> over there you know doug's walking around with a lagunitas <laughs> in his hand and, you know so yeah it's kind of fun it's one of the things these days rain that i really you know, sometimes I reflect a lot. I don't know, I'm an artist, and so I'll have pictures of the kids and stuff. I don't dwell in the past, but I think about it. I look at a picture, and I, I just use it as a way to go, that was fun. I'm really happy now. I'm not going to dwell on that, even though that would have been nice if it would have lasted longer. But if it did, then maybe this wouldn't have happened. Right. It's this idea of finding a moment and being happy now and then realizing everything you have to do to get there. So it's just it's part of what I like about the club closed. We had it rolling there. OK. And then it closed COVID and all that. And then you go into this situation. It takes a while to grow, you know, organically. But now I've come to the point where all these different house. I had somebody the other day who says, this is a house, a potential house host. Mm -hmm. It's another new venue in Concord okay. we're gonna go to. Uh -huh. So now it's two different places uh -huh. in Concord, uh -huh. right? And what was cool is, and they're regulars, mm -hmm. they said to me, what's your list look like? What's your list look like? Do you have room availability for us as a house host? I, love it. I said, oh shit, when you get to that level, that's <laughs> good stuff right there. If they're coming to me and going, do you have room? For us, that's a I nice said, turn. I that's like it neat. too. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah. So another place so in cool. Concord. But, that is uh, so cool. It's cool. Who are they? Oh, um, his name's Jim Warburton. Okay. Okay. I, I just and it's I, a new place in Concord. Yeah. You were there. Oh, I just thought I talked to somebody at the show that said they were going to talk with you about it. Or something. Okay, maybe yeah. that's a, another yeah. new one. So yeah. we've got about ten more minutes. So these are such unique events that you do. I could see it. it's it's part of history it's a phenomenon so I, yeah if i had a house and i could host it i would definitely oh that's yeah. cool well you know, for a minute than, i thought about history. going i want to go to your warehouse <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> logistically it may not work uh, but that did pass through my mind uh -huh. there for a second that's You're always looking for a well space. i'm always looking for a spot yeah but it's kind of getting back to what i was saying it's yeah. kind of cool because i can put myself in the shoes of not just the musicians but the people who come and then I give them the instructions. And sometimes the instructions aren't so obvious. Like the next one, number 52, is across the street, just down a few houses. But you can't park on the street. The house is pushed on this back. Street? Yeah. Okay. But but the, the house is pushed back. So people have to go to the corner. Mm -hmm. And I referenced my place here. Mm -hmm. They have to go to the corner. Park on the corner and walk down the mystery trail. Oh, I saw the trail. Right. Yeah. I saw so there's, there's a trail. trail. There's a beautiful trail. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's beautiful very trail. enticing. It's right. It's right. It's right. It's right. Well, it's like, but you know, I'm like, who is this guy sending me down? So you know, is there going to be some like uh -huh. wild man at the end of this? <laughs> cool. so, yeah. Good job. But it's yeah. a little bit of that underground. Yeah. Scene. I love it. Where we want to be real popular, but mm -hmm. not in so much in a way where where it's like. 
we're on the radar for everybody, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and I think it's why? A perfect, be, yeah. yeah the, why? Size, I don't want um, anybody ever coming to me and say you can't do that for whatever reason. Yeah, exactly. That's just not gonna work. Yeah. Right. It's so, a backyard party, yeah. basically. Yeah. yeah. What's the problem? Okay, that that would be my attitude. <laughs> exactly. Yes, exactly. What's the problem? Exactly. Okay. All right. We're getting back to music all right. before we cut out of here. It's weird because we're all of age now. What does that mean? I'm not really sure, but uh, we're not teenagers. Oh, let me put it that way. We're mature. Do you have a certain, obviously enjoying the workmanship with the um, tuning and, and fixing and repairing and all that with the instruments and then you're gigging. Do you have like a, a goal? Is there a certain, like... No goals. <laughs> no, I said I have no. Are goals. we allowed? You have no goals. <laughs> when we get to a certain age, are we still allowed? Are we supposed to set goals or something like that, mm -hmm. or are we just kind of like we stuck in our ways? No, I mean, no stuck. Live, live, flow. Let enjoy flow. What's, what's life. Game Let plan? life Let move us. Enjoy yeah. life. From here on out, just keep doing what you're doing. Desires. I keep desires. doing what I'm doing, but I, I'm trying. I, to, I, I just put together my own band. We're okay, just that's rehearsal. the kind of thing that this is Paul Deegan band. Project. So What's I, it the called? Paul Deegan Project. I I've done a few it. gigs. I've had kind of three generations of it. Now, more recently, we started up right during COVID and everything kind of got shut down. Um, and now we're, we're back at it. And I really like the rhythm section I have now. So um, now we're just, I'm just trying to figure out how to put together a promo package and, and get out. And then what would that include? Would that be original standards? It was uh, mostly to start off with, I want to move into originals, but in the beginning I'm doing more kind of smooth jazz or Latin jazz mm -hmm. or pop oriented jazz, okay. some danceable I stuff. Um, but saxophone and flute, it's also an opportunity for me to play a lot more flute. Like oh, in my band, there's nice. a lot more flute than any other group I play in. Very cool. Because and again, like it, Create your own opportunities, yeah. but saxophone as well, of course. Yeah. Does the flute um, lend itself to like Latin jazz? Quite a bit. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's what I remember it. You know, just being from like, the East Coast, I would hear a lot of that in Latin music. Is the flute, and I always loved it. Yeah, you know, there's some crazy good flute players in mm -hmm. the Latin jazz world. Yeah, that exactly. You might not have, saxophone players too, as well. Mm -hmm. um, but flute in particular, they break out that some guys like, are just like, goodness. how do they do that? They have uh -huh. a whole extra octave over the rest of us, uh -huh. and they specialize in that kind of stuff, and it's. It's really quite amazing. So I'm not at that level, but I, you know, I, I, I like the are. genre, yeah. and I, you know, and of course I love the instrument, and so I, I do a lot of that. Oh and, well, let yeah. us know when you're ready to play. Out I don't know. Yeah, I would love to come and at see. At the you. impulse room, was there? I was yeah. knocking on your door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. In fact, one of them, my bass player uh, just moved up to Conquer, so I'm sure he'd be willing to do a gig up this way. Oh, all yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, so I, I don't know if I have you scheduled for another one, but we're going to have to work on that. So we got to look yeah, at that. Yeah, I'm always going to let you do it. I will. It's fun. Yeah. Again, thanks for 51. 51 was great. Yeah, oh, thanks. amazing. Cool. So anyone did you watching have, this who didn't see 51 should check that out. You know, that was yeah. really cool. It did was, you have a song or anything yeah. that stood out to you? I mean, you may not remember the name or anything, but is there any? Oh, wait a minute. It's only been a few days. So have you had a chance to watch it yet? No. I, yeah, I looked at them um, because I, I knew I was coming here. So yeah, I thought the, the, all of it was good. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's more, I have ones that I didn't like as much. Uh-huh. Um, I think for my, at least, you know, I thought Simon and, and Wally every, and uh, Ryan. Yeah, everybody played great. So, mm -hmm. so in fact, that's, you know, I enjoy just listening to the other players and all of these. And so there's always worth listening to for them. From, from what I did, I felt like, I think my my two favorites were the Neo Soul. Yeah, Neo yeah. Soul. I love that and then song. What was yeah, the one that's really one Neo played. Soul. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. 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 And then a, another one I played alto one. The one that I started where I, would, I meandered for a while. Okay. And then finally locked it about... Uh, oh, seven. Music Ministry? Yeah. Yeah. It took me about two minutes to kind of lock it in. It's so hard to start when you, you know, when you have me start one. It's usually kind of me mm -hmm. wandering around aimlessly mm -hmm. I don't, you know, in no other musical situation do I do that it's mm -hmm. like the band starts and then I kind of put the icing on the cake yeah. see I like that and you know just getting back to the mm -hmm. thing and I think you had something you want to say yeah. but um, then I know that though and then I look at the other musicians and I can see the expression on each one of their faces like where's that hook where am I going to find that that thing I can latch on to 
it's so hard for me because I, I, I latch on to what other people are doing. So yeah. to be See, just kind of walking around, like, like, which, <laughs> I, I should really, you know, pick a direction, pick a beat, pick, you know, yeah. a cue uh -huh. or a Can you find version. a pocket with a solo? I mean, if the band is playing, it's easy to... No, but to start. By it's myself, a, a, it's, initial it's, solo. it's not something I normally do, so it's it's it doesn't come naturally. Well, that's uh, funny. That's cool. I like uh, it. You'll have to do that more to him. Yes. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I see the look in their face when you ask someone to start something anyway. I mean, there's, there's just that, that frozen look. Right, 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 right. right. It's don't like, call the description of, you know, imagine <laughs> this or that. And then, yeah. like, okay, so... I have to imagine this <laughs> and pick a tempo, pick a key. And like all of it. Dude, there's a lot like for me to process. <laughs> exactly. Right and now i got to perform go. it. I'm yeah, just exactly. jumping on a moving train. <laughs> exactly. That's a great life. analogy, jumping on a moving train. That sounds like a song title. Yeah, I like it. You'll have to do that. Yeah, the next show or Yeah, something. I was just going to make a comment yeah. about um, the term music ministry. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And um, I don't know if you've used it before. Have you? Only in that vain to create the song title and, and oh, the, the description show. what's that you mean in the last show in the last show okay. yeah and then the descriptors that i gave yeah i just um you know when i first met you and i saw you um i saw your concert or whatever and i um said oh god i want to interview this guy you know i not only love the music but i loved um your storytelling and how you were a part of the performance and I said, oh, he's kind of like a performance artist as well. He's not just a producer of a show, you know, um, or a host. But now when you last, at the last show, when you said music ministry, I was like, no, he's not a performance artist. He is a minister. <laughs> <laughs> he I, I is feel, a minister I, I get like that a little bit. I yeah, no, you know. truly are. That is a perfect title for you. I just flashed back to one of the, the jams we did at the Impulse Room, and I remember you were reciting poetry. Oh, at one point wow. over the music yeah and you haven't done that in a while but that was cool too yeah. yeah he's a poet yeah yeah so that's kind of like along the lines of the, a performance artist as well yeah. because he just yeah. he just flows with it okay but, so you were cool with that no yeah i was super yeah. cool with it we gotta get, get that yeah but your name it. should be like you have a yeah. music ministry and but you're a performance artist the you other know what musicians I mean? yeah. bobby Bobby, we're developing Bobby, your Martin, Ross, like everybody else that i could list here you're in trouble it was paul deegan who asked me to he didn't ask me to, but he brought up the idea of introducing poetry, so I'm going <laughs> to ask for forgiveness. <laughs> if, I, if I throw poetry your oh, well, way and you're the next... That yeah, suggestion, it's that so dude's fault right I'm there. So, it, okay, they're yeah. going to be, what the fuck this guy is doing? Poetry. Yeah, that's all good. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank <laughs> you. 